with watching Adam and when he was diagnosed with bipolar, he kept it to himself. He didn't want to share that information with his friends. And so he struggled to stay normal. And he would only share with me his ups and his downs, his highs, his lows. Not knowing any better, you know, I honored his privacy. And I regret that. It was hard to watch him go through that and to see one of my best friends reeling in that much pain and to be talking to his mother to try and help him and everything that we could do under the sun. But it just, it wasn't enough. And eventually Adam's illness caused him to take his own life and me and his mother, Naomi, didn't really know what to do with all that pain. It was too much for any of us to bear. So Naomi came up with the brilliant idea of starting this non-for-profit, the Adams Hope House. And we're dedicated to suicide awareness and prevention in memory of Adam. There were several students during my time teaching who did take their lives. And I clearly remember a couple of situations that the, the child was very disconnected. And, and so I know what, there's an emptiness. There's this emptiness that that needs um, a filling and a, and a wholeness that's not there. I met Naomi at a time when I had a very, very close family member, a teenager, who had been hospitalized for depression and anxiety, um, self-injury, and it was heartbreaking. It was just heartbreaking to see a girl who had been, you know, a happy, normal, spirited, feisty kid really take a dramatic turn around the age of 12. Kids. Um, feel intensely when they're teenagers. They have very deep feelings and their anger is strong and their sadness is terrible and it's just, it's very hard to live a roller coaster life as a teenager in general. In the course of the year I've been working with two different teenagers who are at risk of suicide and one thing that I've learned, I've been teaching them guitar individually and what I have learned is to give them the sense that there are adults, there's a community of adults who are there for them, that if they feel they cannot go to their own parents, just the way my own daughter in her crisis certainly wasn't coming to me, but she would go to Naomi. There's other adults, there's a support team around there for them. More than anything, I think that the people involved in making this a success are what drives me to want to be with them. Adam's Hope House, with the people who are involved, has the potential to offer um, ways for somebody in trouble to tap into their life's, life spark and express themselves. There, there are options, and I just want to make sure that, that people know what's available to them. And Adam's Hope House is a perfect way for teenagers to learn about what's possible and for their families to get support that they need as well. It really just kind of boils down to one word and that is love. When people get in crisis, I know when I was in crisis, that word was not really accessible to me. Hope was barely accessible. Hope was a glimmer, gleam thing way out in the distance. The one word that I got eventually was, okay, I can have faith. Even if I don't anything else, I, I see that things operate in the world, people operate in the world, that there are functional, loving, kind people out there. And I can have faith that's a mental construct I can put in place that I can move towards. I wish, I, Adam, there, there was some place out there Adam might be here today and, and Adam's hope wouldn't have been created, but um, if it was there, it wouldn't have had to. The vision is to have a place where people can come and remember the wholeness of who they are, really through this concept of the tree of life, being able to tap into the different parts um, of who they are. So there's all these different levels and really help people to 
come back into wholeness through all of these programs in terms of arts and creativity and and all of these things that help people to to start having hope for their lives and having hope for what who they are and, and how they can contribute in life. Adam's Hope was created to bring that hope back and to connect people back to the human element. And a lot of it is technology-based society, is everybody's texting their pain, everybody is internetting their pain, Facebooking their pain, but they're not actually talking to anyone. There's no place out there like what we're trying to do with the Adams Hope House. We're trying to build a community, not a hospital a community-wide treatment center where the entire community is based around treatment and healing the soul. Acupuncture calms people down. It just feels really good. And I know it sounds strange, you've got needles all over your body, but at the same time, it, when you're done, you feel really calm. So then you can make better choices, and then you can become teachable. And that's, that's what I'm hoping to help people do. There are a multitude of people who might have a passion that they've not yet discovered, just for them to watch someone like Emily Eisen, who's doing a painting, or Toby Tobias, who's getting out there and leading songwriting workshops, uh, for them to see um, someone in sports or someone who's into farming, to have role models, people who they can gravitate and learn from, that there's a whole world of experiences out there waiting for them to try. Adam's Hope House will be a place of light. It'll be a place of light because you can get in touch with many different modalities, many different ways of expressing yourself or experiencing things. Music, art, the yoga, whatever it might be. It's a wonderful place to see lots of different opportunities that you may think aren't there, but in fact if you try them out you might discover that there's something really beautiful there that that will touch you. This is, this is one of the paintings that I made. It says live and so I really like, I like the idea that somebody who maybe isn't that verbal and doesn't have such great language skills can be reached through other means and not just through speaking with that person. For some people, they just don't have that skill. They can be reached in other ways. There are other inroads. My ultimate goal uh, in for working with uh, people in Adam's Hope House or working with people who are suicidal is to show them that music has a way to heal them. I want to give someone a sense of community, to let someone know that they're not alone, that there are people out there who have also had challenges and it is possible to triumph, it is possible to come back, and it's possible to come back with a commitment to life you never even felt before. I think it's really about having a concrete hold on having tools for themselves. When they get in trouble, when their thinking is, is not in the lifeline thinking, I think it is very concrete. It's, it's got to be beyond hope. It's got to be, here's what I can do when I get this way. Here's who I can reach out to. Here are my own personal tools. So yeah, it's, it's hope and more. It doesn't matter what you express, as long as you express it. And there's really no way to lose with art. Um, I mean, I plan to do things that are, use your hands, express your hands into sculpture or clay or, or use paint or do whatever it is that needs to be done to get you to free yourself. Maybe your vision isn't clear right now and you can't see beyond your situation, but 100% guarantee that there's more to what you're seeing and it's our hope that you give us a chance to help you see the future that, you know, it's hard to picture right now because there is always hope. One of the main reasons I'm here is because I loved Adam so much that I see the way that his mom was affected by all of this and the pain that she's still going through. And I just never want to have to see another mother go through that pain. You know, we all need that place that you can go to where you just know that you're loved and welcomed. And it doesn't really exist from what I've seen. There are hospitalizations that's, you know, important for real crisis for someone who's suicidal. Um, there are step-down programs where people can go for maybe a week or 10 days where they're getting some help. 
and then you're out on your own. They give you the name of psychiatrist and a therapist and wish you luck and that's not enough. It's not enough. It's people need ongoing support and I can't think of any other way to say it but just unconditional love. And we're trying to build a place where we can realize all of these different types of therapies under one roof, all for the same purpose of helping people and restoring hope. It's my mission that no other mother, brother, father, sister, friend ever has to feel the agony of losing someone who lost hope and gave up. That's Adam's Hope House.